Namo Buddhaya, this is Abhinav Kulecha and I welcome you. In this video, I am sharing my learning essence from the Middle Discourses 4. And this discourse basically talks about uh, how to overcome fear and how Buddha overcome his fear and, uh, and attained his enlightenment on the night of his enlightenment. So basically, he, this discourse uh, is basically directed at monks, people who are uh, monks and who are practice in wilderness. They practice in forests and everything. So when you are practicing in forests and there is seclusion, isolation, then even a ruffle of a feather or a deer passing by can generate fear in you because there are wild animals and all kinds of wild animals and uh, all are there. So, and you can, you and I can imagine, we are lay people, we can imagine what kind of fear that will be there uh, and in that fear, the mendicants were practicing, right? So, Buddha's guidance on that to the monks is there in this sutta and also it has some guidance for us as lay people right so i have just have a, a few points that i have made so i will just uh, to cap capture the essence so buddha spoke first of monks who are unskillful in their conduct who have ill will in their mind and who have greed hatred aversion in their mind and who and they basically when they go in the wilderness they are gripped with fear right Whereas Buddha said that when I go in the uh, uh, in the wilderness, I go in the forest, I do not feel fear, right? Because my mind is purified, my conduct is purified, right? So Buddha here brings about this important point is that we feel fear, hatred, aversion. Why do we feel these emotions, right? Do we feel these emotions because of the fear, hatred, emotion, unpurific unpurified elements within us, the defilements that, that are within us in our unconscious, they make us feel the fear outside. See, understand this whole thing. So, I'm also a hypnotherapist. So, I'm just trying to fit in this thing with the modern logic. Is that there are seeds of fear, hatred, aversion, unpurified, all the emotions in me, in the unconscious. So whatever outside is like a ruffle of a feather or a deer walking by, they basically what they do is that they trigger the unpurified emotions, unpurified the unpurified seeds from me, right? There is nothing outside. The fear is not outside. the The seeds of that fear are inside because my mind is also not well developed. So those seeds get sprouted, and I feel fear. So Buddha is bringing us back to ourselves that look within yourself of that your mind is not purified, your conduct is not purified. So first work on purifying your mind and conduct more and more. That's why Buddha has given a lot of importance on the precepts, the purifying our conduct. See, what is the Noble Eightfold Path? Three elements. First, uh, ethical conduct, right? Second, second is mental development. And third is wisdom. Right, seeing things with the right view. So Buddha is trying to say here is that purify the conduct. Now for lay people, the the we have to follow the five precept, five precepts: no lying, no killing, no lying, no stealing, no sexual misconduct, and no drinking. Five things. For monks, there are eight precepts and even more precepts. Right, but for us lay people, there are minimum five precepts that we need to follow. Right, that is like we are living in a right conduct. Second, we need to develop our mind through meditation and through mindfulness. So all that and then third is viewing, uh, having the right view. That means impermanence. Everything is impermanent. Everything is changing. Non-self. There is no permanent self. And third is suffering. Beneath everything is suffering. Having that right view. Right? So important thing Buddha is trying to say is purify your conduct, develop your mind. And that will help you overcome the fear. Now, Buddha also explained his own story that when he was when he was in the initial stages, so what Buddha did, did was after 29 years, he left his home and he went into the wilderness searching for that answer to that one question, how to be free from suffering. So, so he was also, his mind was also not fully developed. So what basically happened was, Buddha said that when there was this ruffle of a feather or a deer passing by, what I stopped and I see and I stopped to look where is this fear coming from right so there is an entire passage the link to the entire discourse is given in the description you can check that the so Buddha said I started looking into that fear 
so he instead of directing his mind outward into whatever was the situation right outside he directed my his mind inwards to look at watch the fear directly right and then he made a very direct effort to to watch this fear so the lesson for me people like me and you is that mindfulness of our thoughts of our emotions more and more mindfulness so what is the solution of this greed fear anger anger coming into our minds mindfulness becoming more mindful of this all these emotions the more we are we are mindful of these emotional and the mental states that arise the more we the more these 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 the energy of these emotions start to clear and we realize the fact that all these states are impermanent greed anger this is also impermanent all the happy states are also impermanent if i stick into any of these states i create suffering for myself so that insight when i get is is when i achieve liberation when i digest that complete thing fully the four noble truths fully that is where i am free right at least i reach the sotapanna right i reach the first so there are various stages of awakening i have made a separate video on that so i at least first reach the the stream entry level right and then from there i work on myself work on myself continuously and finally i get completely free from defilements and i become a arahant right so we have a path that buddha has given to us but in this sutta the buddha says look into the fear be mindful of that fear right this is my limited understanding there might be a different perception different view on this right okay then there is one other thing that i could find out from this sutta is that where one point buddha said that if the mind is not very well developed then over exertion in the meditation can lead to mental breakdown and a wrong perception of reality so there was this question that when the monks meditate there are sometimes what happens is that they think that uh, where is whereas it is day they think it's night and when it is night they think it is day this happens when a person over exerts in meditation so they lose the perception of reality so buddha gave very precise guidance here saying that too much if the mind is not very well developed too much over exertion in meditation can lead to changes in perception and this is slightly pointing to the to the uh, i will say side effects not side effects i will say uh, wrong uh, you know effects of meditation and mindfulness so it is like so it is like said that meditation and mindfulness is like sold today commercialized today as a one size fits all solution for everyone which is not right there is also a book mac mindfulness uh, by that name right it's highly so commercialized see there are certain people who have certain mental disorders or like schizophrenia or anxiety or you know for them maybe meditation is not the right solution at that point or for example people who have these mental disorders or any significant issues in their life who uh, attend these intensive like retreats like long days of 10 days 15 days 20 days continuous 15 hours of meditation every day that can lead to a mental breakdown because their mind is not well developed and at the time of the meditation lot of these things can arise for which their mind doesn't have the energy to to kind of hold on to you know those issues that arise right so that we need to be careful as a lay person we need to go step by step in our meditation right then uh, yes this is one of the sutras this is one of the sutras where buddha explained his meditation journey how he did his meditation especially the night of his enlightenment so here in this sutta and the other sutras uh, being mn19 uh, Uh, middle discourses 19 and 128 where buddha has shared his meditation journey so now here important thing is buddha is showing himself let's see i am an ordinary person i have made my efforts in my journey to achieve enlightenment so this totally contradicts the whole concept of the ninth avatar of the vishnu and all these things that that were made with the aim to move people to hinduism right so that is again the propaganda that was done to move people from buddhism who are interested in buddhism and who are not sure whether to be in buddhism or hinduism to move them to hinduism buddhism buddha never said that i am 
the ninth of that i am a i am a god or something he in his 45 years of existence he never spoke about god so buddhist buddha's whole teaching was not at all focused on god whereas then they wanted they wanted you no know, people to be moved to their religion so those people they had this propaganda made him the ninth avatar of vishnu and did all these things which is not exactly so this is how where in this sutta buddha is explaining that buddha is trying to explain his journey of enlightenment and he says that when in the night of my enlightenment when my mind was completely purified i extended my my knowledge to other things and i got three knowledges so what were the three knowledges that buddha got one is recollection of all his past lives one by one he saw hundreds and thousands of his past lives right as to how he was born how he was his clan was and how he got rebirth rebirth and rebirth and rebirth right so he got his knowledge of his own past lives second he got the knowledge of how sentient beings are born according to the deeds now this is very very important here buddha got the insight on how see because once the mind is purified and pure there is no effort then the knowledge just springs up by itself then buddha realized that how sentient beings according to their deeds they are born into the the realms right it is not by way of the penance the worship and the rituals that they do so that's why buddha totally totally rejected first of all he rejected the vedas right he rejected the authority of the brahmans then he rejected the authority of all the worship rituals buddha clearly said that and i have made a separate video on this in one of the from the one of the other suttas no amount of prayers can save you if your conduct is wrong right you can check out that by, by this name another video i made so buddha was buddha's teachings are totally on your conduct whatever conduct you do accordingly you you'll get born so why buddha started sharing all his teachings after his enlightenment because out of a compassion he when when he realized this thing that beings get born as per their conduct and not because of anything else he realized how people are you know banging their head on the wall life after life suffering 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 and they do not have the knowledge that because of their conduct of you no know, killing stealing all these things they get born into lower realms and they suffer and that's why out of that compassion buddha started teaching the noble eightfold path so friends as students of the buddha for us the one thing that is most important is the conduct we have to improve our conduct our speech our actions through the body our thoughts we need to work on our thoughts thoughts you know body mind and speech we need to work on that right so the first thing is got the recollection of the past life second how sentient beings are reborn according to their deeds right that was the second realization and the third realization was the four noble truths what are the four noble truths there is suffering suffering arises because of ignorance craving the suffering can be ceased and the way to cease the suffering is the noble eightfold path and this when he realized then he when when he realized this knowledge of the four noble truths then he is he got rid of three things sensuality desire to be reborn and ignorance and when those three things got over he got complete freedom so there is this thing in the sutta that is given very beautiful thing i, I will just i will knowing and seeing like this my mind was freed from the defilements of sensuality desire to be reborn and ignorance when it was freed i knew it was freed they understand so this is a this is the mind of an arhant right rebirth is ended the spiritual journey has been completed what had to be done has to be has been done there is no return to any state of existence right that is like complete nirvana complete freedom complete nibban freedom so this is one sutta where buddha explained what happened in the night of his enlightenment right so this is mn4 uh, middle discourses 4 i hope the video was useful uh, do share your do please read the sutta at your end also do share your thoughts and reflections on this sutta i hope these videos are help being helpful to you please do consider supporting my work the links are given below and uh, uh, see you in the next video keep practicing namo buddhaye namo buddhaye